Remind me what we're talking. Got Hi. it. Recording in progress. Hello, Moshetti. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's um, it's a holiday weekend here. Ooh, how come? Because Monday is Labor Day. And I don't really know what that means, but here's my theory. So Tracy, mm -hmm. our listener, can correct me or fill us okay. in. I think we used to take a day off for like harvesting our crops. Okay. But I don't really know that. That's the story that I made up in my head about what Labor Day is. We have a Labor Day, which is in May. And I also don't know what that is about. Mm. I thought it was a day off for workers, which it, it is, but I don't know any more about it than that. So something to follow up on. It. So, <laughs> so listener, if you could let us know what the hell Labor Day is in England and in America, uh, that'd be great. We'd appreciate it. So yeah. you've got the day off. Well, Not I mean, it's yet. Saturday Monday. today. It's okay. A, it's a long weekend. Oh, luxurious. It is. How nice. It is. Mm -hmm. And we got invited. My husband and I got invited to um, sit in the chancellor's suite for the big university football game today where I live. Wow. And I said to my husband, the chancellor must be running out of friends if like we're on the <laughs> list now. <laughs> So don't say that. He might be listening. Yeah, yeah, of course he is. He's local. He'll be listening. Just kidding, Andy. <laughs> oh, how nice. Yeah, so that's exciting. I feel kind of like, and I've got like a special parking pass. Like, come on. It's, like it's fancy. Time. It's it fancy is. and posh. Are you going to wear something totally. nice or something really horrible? Oh, well, it's going to be blazingly hot today. We mm -hmm. have a weird high pressure system that's like making it unbearable outside. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to wear. I might just wear this. Frock. I'll go straight from the gym just to the freaking football. To the thing. No, a frock. A wear frock. green. You look nice and green. Thank you. My color is autumn. That's my Oh, color. really? Oh. Did I ever well, tell that, you? Would that be green? No. Well, Brown. there's a green in autumn. Yeah. Course, like a khaki. That's it. The that khaki made me sound that like you I'm from Wisconsin. Khaki. khaki. Yeah, khaki. The khaki that you had on in your recent pictures mm, that Bodhi yes. took um, look really nice. That looks nice. <gasps> you, you remember. Mm. So tell me, how are you? I'm okay. Mm. That's the extent of it. Okay. Yes. I'm well, okay. Let's just be okay. I love mm. that you didn't make up anything that isn't true. No. No. I don't, don't you hate it when people do that? And lie. I don't have it in me to lie today. I probably could, but not today. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. Boom. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I had some coffee, but no cream in it. What? No, ex no extra treats in it. So it was just black coffee. So I How feel do a little you drink deprived. It? Yeah. I feel a bit deprived. I don't yeah. like coffee, but I like coffee creamer. So the coffee is the vessel in which I put the creamer that I love. Creamer being powder? No, um, in America, <laughs> we have like a thousand, and I'm sure they're all carcinogenic. I actually don't drink that shit anymore, but like we have a thousand different high sugar, like creamer, like liquid creamer. I think it might be dairy, could be like a soy product, But it's whatever. not cream. As in Not, single well, cream? Some of them are. Some of them are actually okay. a cream with a flavoring in it. I now literally just drink half and half in my coffee with stevia, oh, which gives me you. enough of like the sweetness and the, the mm -hmm. creaminess that I can actually, that mm -hmm. I like to drink coffee. Otherwise, I would never mm -hmm. in a thousand years drink a black coffee. No, I mean, I've been putting, <laughs> I've been putting butter into yeah. my coffee yes and then I was putting butter and cream in and, and then there then... was like a hamburger <laughs> 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 and french fries in my coffee delightful so nice and so filling <laughs> and then I was like oh I'm gonna put some cream on top and then last week I decided oh I'm gonna have homemade mocha 
so I, I got my little plungy thing out and frothed up some really nice full fat milk into a silky cream and then so then mm. I had chocolate two teaspoons of chocolate like heaped teaspoons of I've come alive now can you see Look, <laughs> I, I think you I need okay. now, now we're talking about butter I'm happy <laughs> that's a top oh, our topic today is chocolate. actually butter yeah um so two heaped teaspoons of chocolate powder Mm. like Cadbury's Yum chocolate up. powder coffee two shots um cream as in just our version of cream which is just cream from a cow I guess yeah. I don't know if the cow makes it <laughs> the cow in the factory the is doing cream the cow's got like the plunger <laughs> this other is doing yeah so anyway cream um, and then the silky smooth frothed milk on. Oh, God. Anyway, I need to lose some weight. I had my blood pressure taken yesterday, and she said, um, "You're between two and four stone overweight." How many pounds is in a stone again? Two and a half or something? It's seven kilos. I want to say. So seven kilos. I'm I'm, I'm between twelve and twenty five kilos overweight that's like a whole person <laughs> okay there's 2.2 kilos in a pound so like five to ten five ish pounds overweight so we're not like am i doing that right that's i don't face. know i don't either i, Again, I don't know i don't know listener could you know. convert <laughs> this is a list of, of tasks first of all what the fuck is labor day second of all how many stone how many yeah. pounds are in a stone? Anyways. I think seven kilos is one stone. But I, I mean, two point two kilos in a pound. No, is there, there's two point two, two pounds, pounds in, in a kilo. kilo. So then we're talking like twenty to twenty five pounds. You got to lose. Yeah, a pile of weight. Anyway, that's not convenient. That's like. No, I know. So I've had two black coffees this morning instead of piling all the stuff in. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I need to lose it. So it'll help my breathing and it'll help everything. You know, it'll help everything. It's good for longevity as well. Yes. You want to live a long life? Want <laughs> longevity. For sure. Yeah. Quality of life. OK. Mm. But what so, the fuck are we talking about today? Well, I know, I know. Talking. Oh, okay. You tell, you tell them. Me. Go. <laughs> um, so I, cause I was in it and then I was talking to a friend, a colleague that I hadn't talked to in several years and she's, she hasn't gotten supported in three years and mm. she is still in it. And so it's overwhelm and like the badge of honor that go comes along with being busy which we talk about all the time. It's not that there's anything earth shattering that we're going to probably uncover today. Mm. And yet it's such like, for me, it's such a seductive um, place to be. Mm. To mm. Put a bunch of shit on my plate mm. and then be like, look how busy I am. So why did you particularly, obviously you had that nudge from that friend. Mm. Yes. But I'm what, also, mm. what kind of made you think? Mm. Because um, it helped me to see. Okay, so the story that I made up, whether it's true or not, is that mm. without support, it's really unlikely that I or this friend. I'm, I'm like summarizing why she's still where she's at. Maybe she really loves to be busy, and I'm just being a judgy whatever but mm. like the reason that she still kind of like hasn't launched the desires that she has in her life why she hasn't like why she's not experiencing the life that she really deeply wants um and she's still in the like in the rat race mm. is um probably because she can't see what she can't see mm. and when I was there, I couldn't see it either. And it took other people to like point at it and be like, you got a thing going on. And I'd be like, wait, what? I can't see it. And so the first time it happened to me was, I think it was 2008 or 2009. I just remember my nurse practitioner looking at me and she's like, you 
have to stop. And mm. I was sobbing. I had double pneumonia. I was not taking any time off. I had two babies. I was going to MBA school at night. I was also caretaking my grandparents who were in a nursing home. It was insane. I was trying to like manage my husband's alcoholism. Like, what are you doing? And working full time. Mm. Like, and she just looked at me and she's like, you need to stop. She like looked me right in my eyes and I just broke. I was like, eh, mm. yes, I do. So mm. that was kind of the beginning of my journey, but I couldn't see, I couldn't see it until she like got me right between the eyes. You know what I mean? Mm. I do. And I'm, I'm kind of, you're, you've said a couple of times getting support. Yeah. And by that, you mean somebody outside of yourself helping mm. you to see number one, helping you to see what you can't see. I would imagine. Like, is there anybody in this woman's life? Is there anybody in my life that can point out, oh, you're doing the thing again, which I have now like a small army of people. You being one of them. Thank you. Small army. Small army of like, Allison, mm. you're fucking up. Um, and then like, if once you can see the thing that keeps getting created, now what? Like I need, cause there, I'm doing it for a reason, right? There's a reason that I, I will go to overwhelm, that I'll get busy, that I'll be like resentful of all the things I have to do. And oh, I'm the only one, right? Like there's a reason mm. that I do that. And if I were to interrupt that or try to practice doing something different, I know and have experienced like there's a bunch of being confronted. I'm like, oh, fuck. Mm. That's why. Yeah. And, and the snapback, because it's, of course, as you said, it's seductive. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about why we think it's seductive. Um, but it's a seductive loop to get caught in. Yeah. Um, and, and it's powerful. And so it's easy to get snapped back into it, and to it be works. drawn back into it. It yeah. does. I mean, I've got some stuff to say about why I get Please. busy. Well, I just, um, it stops me having, I mean, it's a little bit like you said at the beginning about your friend. She is still sitting three years later after the, you know, when you had a chat about her deep desires and passions and she hasn't brought them to life. Um, for me, keeping busy, eyes down, doing stuff that's really important, that's in the moment, needs to be done, and yeah. seems very reasonable that I would do it, and quite unreasonable that I wouldn't do it. It means I constantly have an excuse for having not done the other big things, which are confronting and challenging for me, yeah. because they, they a whole bunch of reasons, but they mean me stepping outside of what is familiar yes taking a risk yes I don't want to do any of that I want to be safe and comfortable yes. and snuggly in a little you know little bundle and I don't want to take <laughs> I don't want to take a, a you know a risk and do something that is unfamiliar that I don't know the outcome of so if I keep really busy yeah with important things that needed doing that nobody would say well you could just have left that then I don't have to look at the stuff I'm not, that I'm avoiding. Yes. I, um, I have another friend I was talking to and she has some downtime right now. And she was sharing that um, she really needs to get her arms around her finances. And she said, I can't figure out what, why I'm resisting this. Hmm. And when we started to have a conversation about it, like, I'm not kidding. You start to like pull back a layer and then it's like, oh God, there's like all these stories about how she, like the money is attached to her intelligence. So then we like peel that back and we're like, okay, so like we wouldn't want to look at it because our finances are a reflection of our intelligence, or how smart we are, how savvy. And then we start to pull back even more mm. and it's like, oh gosh, there's a fear of abandonment that's underneath all of that. And so when we got all the way down there and she's sobbing and having like, like reliving some trauma from childhood, I was like, oh, 
does it make sense to you why you don't want to look at your finances? Like it's never about the money, mm. about all the shit that's underneath mm. all of that. And to look mm. at all of that, I mean, I guess you can do it alone. I'm not saying you can't, it's just unlikely. And it's also hard to like, just like you can't lick your elbow, try it. You mm. can't do it. It's really hard. See, you can't do it. I can oh, impossible. Uh, and you can't tickle yourself either. It's not possible. You also have a very, it's very difficult to like interrupt the thinking, mm. the story. Like, yeah, I mean, that's been my experience. I can mm. get so far and then, and then I stop and I get drawn back into the pattern. Never this mind. Morning, yeah, this morning, I, I mean, I don't know if this kind of relates, but anyway, you know, I was like, oh, do you know, it won't hurt. There's cream in the fridge. It's not going to hurt if I just, it's going to be wasteful if I just don't. Just a splash. Just a splash of cream. <laughs> just a little bit of cream. Yeah. Um, you know, what's what's it going to hurt? I just won't buy any more, ever. Um, ever. <laughs> Again. I can't trust myself if it's in the fridge. But, you know, the, the, the habit, the, the habit just pulled me back. It was comforting. The thought of just, just have it. Look, you, you know, you can, you can start after that drink. So, yes. so just pushing away, basically pushing away the thing that was harder and more confronting for me to do, which yes. was in this tiny instance was not to have the, you know, to do what I'd committed to do and not have the, the, cream and the sugar and all the things in the drink but that that really took me to kind of like presence myself and I am getting supported I do have a coach and like you a you know a small you know group of people who are um willing kind loving brave enough to um support me and point mm -hmm. things out to me mm -hmm. you know with love yeah. Yes. to help me but yeah. you know um Casey and I were talking about this yesterday how when somebody says it, it's, it feels like a product this busyness feels like very much a product of our society mm -hmm. and when um somebody says you know how are you my son who Ruben who's in America at the moment studying messaged me a couple of days ago and said how are you mum and I noticed I listed a bunch of things I had done. I was like, oh, I'm great. And then I, by way almost of explanation, I explained why I was great because I had done all these things. Yeah. The if then. You know, if yeah, I've done all these things, then I am great. Then I'm, then I'm great. I've yeah. had a good day because I've achieved all of these things. Yes. And I don't get quite the same feeling. Or do I? If I've committed, I think the thing is actually, I was going to say, I don't get quite the same feeling if I commit to relaxing for the day, but actually I very rarely make that commitment. I feel yeah. like I'm wasting my time Yep. if I'm not being productive. And, you know, son number two messaged me and said, you know, a few days ago and said, how are you? And I said, Oh, I'm great. And I did it again. I listed all the things that I had done. And he replied, Oh, really productive. And then I was sort of like, Ah, I've fallen into the trap of being right. productive. Obviously, I want to be productive. There are things I want to do. But I think it's less about um, getting those things done and more about the intention that I have yeah. underneath them. Why am I? getting those things done and a lot of the time I am um I keep myself really busy mm -hmm. to as an avoidance tactic I mean who doesn't like when I think through all of the people that I know I know there's eight billion people on this planet so I'm not saying that just because of the people that I know that's therefore this mm -hmm. is true for everyone and most of the people that I know that fall into busy, like, how are you? Well, I've got a thousand things and the kids are doing all the things mm. and I've accomplished mm. all that. Like when that mm. becomes <clears throat> the go-to, um, it feels a lot like um, 
<laughs> I had a friend that used to like, she had just started, I was, she was a running partner. And so we would run every Saturday for years. And she had started a job at a corporation that was very well known to like burn the candle at both ends. Like you will be expected to be on. And the environment itself was incredibly toxic. A lot of politics being played, backstabbing, undermining, all that kind of stuff. So I was kind of like, good luck. So we would be running and she would be sharing like the disasters that were like happening, like really mean stuff going on. And um, she was also having a health, like a pretty significant health event. Like she'd found out that she was diagnosed with something that was really debilitating. Mm -hmm. And like, after all of like, we'd been running 30 minutes and after the whole story of like all the shit that was going on at work and then being like handed this diagnosis that is like now a lifetime chronic can be, you know, debilitating over your life. She's like, but I'm fine. And she like smiled. And I was like, you're gritting your teeth right now. Like you're literally going like, I'm fine. Mm. And we both started laughing. Like, what is that? Why do we say it's fine? Mm. What, it, what, like, are we trying to convince ourselves that we can do it? Or are we trying to convince others that they don't have to worry about us? Or are we trying to convince others that we're like strong enough to handle it? I, I think it, I mean, it's going to be different for everyone, possibly, but I think it's the latter. I think there's some yeah. kind of badge of honor yeah. when you have listed all mm -hmm. the things you've had to do and all of the difficulties that you have had to face. Um, and then you say, onwards and upwards, keep going you say yeah. something you know but I'm fine you know I've got this kind of thing I think there's some sort of badge of honor like yeah. the more I suffer the more I do the better I am as a person like do you think that that's I, cultural well I have no idea if people you know, living in the South Pole have this experience. So well, I can't say 100% that it's cultural, but I know that I'd be prepared to bet money that most of the people I know have that experience. You lived in Africa. Okay, it's possibly cultural. The reason I, Based on I bring that it experience. up, yeah, that mm. I was just in Nepal and my husband and I were like, there's a lot of people sitting doing nothing around here. <laughs> you know, like as a, like a Westerner and American, like you pull yourself yeah. up by your bootstraps, you know, you work hard, nah, 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 all of that. Like, and then we're looking around and we're like, there's a lot of people doing nothing. And it wasn't, and they were, and it wasn't like bums on the street begging for money, doing nothing. They were like people we would pass, people in villages were just like sitting in the sun, mm. doing nothing. Mm. Or there were people like sitting out in like where they could watch other people and they were doing nothing. Mm. And that's when it hit me like we are such a culture of like work hard, you save your money. You know, you put away, you hoard, you like, mm. because I don't know why, like, mm. I suspect it's, it's cultural and, and our founding people, whoever like created our culture originally. I think I said this to you the other day, I was reading Jamie Smart's book, yeah. Clarity. And in that he touches on the industrial revolution and says that, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to mash up what he said, but he said, you know, that um when factories came into being mm -hmm. in our industrial revolution they found that the the people who were coming to work in the factories were, would work for like two or three days get a bit of money and then disappear like they they would like, well we need you to keep coming back because the factory doesn't work unless you're all there pressing the buttons and stuff so they they actually started um paying money the factory owners started paying money to the churches so they would give sermons about the value of hard work and productivity and then they were they found that, that first generation of workers were kind of a bit hit and miss but then they 
um, paid money into school so that more people were going to school. So they had this regimented, yeah. you know, you turn up at this time and you stay there till this time. So there was sort of training a society of people yes. to produce. Yes. And I definitely feel I've had a good day. Yeah if I've done a bunch of stuff and I yes. feel a bit like I've wasted my time. Yes. Um, if I, if I, if I haven't ticked a pile of things off, off a list. Yeah. Um, and it's all, and there's go, you go. Okay. Um, I've slightly lost my thread. I'm so sorry. It's Okay. I was going to say, I spoke to a client yesterday who was saying that she she has dreams, desires, things that we're working on that she wants. And um, some stuff has come up, some family stuff that she now has justified why she should be the person to do the stuff. And one of the reasons that she, you know, looking into it a little bit, that she felt she couldn't not do the things and pick up the mantle and do everything was like what will people think of me bingo and I know you know people say how was your weekend what did you do the two things follow you know they're they're connected they're they're joined together they so, almost mean the same thing yes what did you do so if I haven't got anything to say that I've done like yeah you know, make something up. Oh, I, I did some gardening or I relaxed and read a book. Or I may have actually, re the reality may be that I feel I let time slip through my fingers. And to the point about what I've just said about this person, it's like, I don't have value unless I've done something. Yeah. Yeah, we have, I think that's probably a core, like there's something around the value that we bring. It's our own belief of ourselves that like, I'm only as valuable as, and then fill in the blank and we can mm -hmm. peel it all back. And there's uh, inf infinite ways to end that sentence, but it's probably going to be about the things that you do. Mm. And then society supports that society mm. really wraps around us and says like, we're going to reward and um, celebrate the doings. Mm. And so it's like a system. And there's a hierarchy of doing as well, isn't there? Oh, there's boy. a hierarchy, a hierarchy of, of, you know, um, this is a valuable bit of busyness. Yeah. You know, yes. you get it when people yes. talk about their children. It's kind of like, oh, oh my God, I was just going to say that. Johnny doing. And it's kind of like, oh, you know, he's just just working in a cafe and, you know, um, you know, it's trying to work stuff. Out. We, and then we can't. Oh, you know, but it's it doesn't seem He'll that Johnny's there. doing. Yeah, it's not doing very well because he's not doing some, you know, he's not on this trajectory to this amazing place, you know, in his career and his life. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I had um, an experience where I was with a group of friends and one of our friends literally opened up a resume of one of their kids and started to read off. the accomplishments of this child. Wow. And and it was genuine pride. I mean, she was doing mm -hmm. it because she's so damn proud of this kid. Mm. She's like, he's so well-rounded and he does so much and he really puts himself out there. There's mm. a lot of love tied up in that. Mm. Mm. And like, I don't know about you, but my father especially was really tied up in my, my story. My perspective was he mm. was really tied up in my accomplishments. What mm. had I done? Mm. And so again, like it's it's societal, it's familial, it is mm. our social groups. It's taught to us in at least in Western developed nation schools. I would imagine My, our schools are very similar. Mm. I'm sure to yours, mm. where it's like accomplish, 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 and then we celebrate, 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 and then it's about the grade. It's about finishing the thing. It's about checking the thing off the list and then going to the next. Mm. And that that creates a massive GDP. Like there's no doubt about it. Yeah. And no wonder we're all, you know, driven to be busy and productive. Yeah. Um, and I know that I use busyness as a way of avoiding 
doing the scarier things. Right. So imagine if we were to ask a different question, like, I don't even know what the right question is. Um, what's the first question? Well, the, the way that most developed nations run is like, how much money do you make? What are your grades in school? What's your GPA? What's on your resume? What's your, like, we look at numbers which are lagging, lagging indicators, and we use those as metrics. What's your GDP? What's your interest rate? What's your rate of, um, I meant inflation? What's your uh, unemployment? What's your crime? Like all mm -hmm. of that to like really talk about how good are we as people? Mm -hmm. And I'm listening to a book and he was talking about Bhutan. And they said, the question isn't, which is convenient because Bhutan's GDP is like a dollar. But basically, Bhutan said, if you focus on GDP, you're going to get a bunch of people who are basically like the Western world. They're fat, they're unhealthy, they're dying earlier and earlier, and they are having massive mental health issues. Hmm. So, like, that's probably where we started the call with right. me being so we can just end now. Overweight. We can, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like the proving Bhutan's point. Yes. So he they decided as a nation to talk about how how well um, what is what is the wellness and happiness of our people? That that's really what we're after. We think we'll get it through money and accomplishments and achievements. But Bhutan is stepping back and saying, like, we've watched the Western world kind of do the thing. This is, again, my interpretation. So if anybody yeah. is from Bhutan and is listening to this, correct me. Um, it seems like they're looking at how do we have a population of people that are well cared for and feel, um, I don't know, they, they use the word happy. They have a, a mm. gross domestic happiness factor. And they're looking mm. at like different metrics that go along with that, like how their access to health care and um, how do people, how much hope do people feel in their own lives? Um, so. I think it's interesting to now look back at like, there is a different way to live a life. Mm. And they're doing it in other places like Nepal, people were sitting around a lot. Mm. Um, and then I'm also watching the, there's a docu-series on Netflix about the blue zones where people tend to live, have a high, high likelihood of living into their 80s, 90s and hundreds consistently with high quality of life. Like they're not in home. Blue zones so. meaning they live near water. No, nope. blue zone is just the name that somebody zones. gave it because um, it, it was a long story, but a guy, the first guy that started looking at it, he was like, he went on a map and then he used blue to mark places where they had high densities of octogenarians and above who were oh, living okay. high quality so of life. So it's not like the green and blue zone nope. thing of well-being. Nope. Now no. they do happen to be near water, I think. There's two islands, Okinawa and uh, Sardinia are two of the blue zones. There's five. Loma Linda, California is another one. Um, the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica, and I can't remember the fifth one. And so anyways, this docu-series is looking at like, what are the common threats? You know, what are they eating? What are they doing? How are they, how do they look at life? And they too, like in Okinawa, they have Ikigai, which is like purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? Is it to work yourself to the bone and fill every minute and have a, like a busy calendar? And, mm -hmm. and the old woman in that, um, in that docu-series, again, it's propaganda. I get it. He has a bias and he's not a scientist and all of that. And yet it's provoking my thought. And she said, he said, how did you get to be this old? And she said, you got to be happy. And that was it. She was just like, just be happy. You've got to figure out ways to be happy. And yeah, bad things happen and life is tough and all of that. And there's devastation and heartbreak mm. and things. But you figure out, and she's like a hundred years old and she's oh. dancing and she's playing games and she's laughing. And it, mm. it was like this really beautiful um, outlook or perspective that like, you don't have to toil yourself away. And I think in the Western world, what, what is accidentally happened. I don't think that's why we did, we started it or why it started in the first place, but it was like, now it's a beautiful distraction. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, that's definitely how I relate to it as a 
I don't know about beautiful distraction, but it's definitely effective. a distraction. Yes, an effective distraction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that contributes to my sense of self-worth. And it's supported. Mm. You're yeah, not alone in that. No. You'll find a lot of collusion mm. within that mindset. Mm. You have an entire and it's so it's so natural, Ali, that it's not it's not remarkable. It's not m remarked upon. No. It's just how society functions. Yeah. For 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 us in the West, um, that's a sweeping statement. But but yes, it's mm -hmm. it's it's reinforcing. Like if you had to reverse engineer a massively productive society. That's how you do it. Mm. Which according to what I had read in, you know, it's a tiny, it's like a paragraph. It's less than a paragraph in, in um, that book, Clarity. It's saying it was engineered. Yeah. Yes. It, it, we were engineered. It, I mean, I, I, the way I look at public education, at least in America, it was to, to generate uh, there were two things. One is like, let's educate people so they know how to vote. Like that was like one of the main, in my opinion, it seemed like let's educate people so that we can figure out how to get them to vote for us, whatever mm. us is. And the second reason was to create throngs mm. of people who are compliant. Yeah, yeah, worker ants who will do. Mm. And most like our parents' generation was compliant, very compliant. Mm. And now our kids, I don't know about your kids, but I feel like our kids' generation and below isn't playing the game. They're like, this. what is the point of all the money? Like you're miserable and you're sick and you're depressed and you're drinking. And I think maybe they are caught between the two yeah, um, belief systems or the, the two ways of, of functioning. Um, and they're questioning. Hence, yes, the conversation yesterday about Casey kind of like, ah, you know, he's not very well at the moment and kind of like not being able to do what he normally does. Yeah. He has a very packed agenda and he's very busy and he's very productive and he gets a lot done before he goes off to work. And on the days when he isn't working, he gets loads done and not being able to do that because he's not very well is really difficult for him. He's kind of confronting. Like, yeah. It's like, oh. I'm I'm not having that feeling of having produced and ticked things off my list. Yeah. And that just being sitting wherever in the, you know, the communal courtyard or the, the town square or, you know, outside yeah. the, the house on the stoop or whatever it is, you know, looking out at looking watching the world go by. Yeah. Um that is that is, he's finding that really challenging. Mm -hmm. Hence the conversation about, you know, how are you? Oh, I did this, that, and the other. So I feel great. Yeah. Um, this book, The Comfort Crisis, that I'm listening to is he is making the, he's testing the theory um, that it is very difficult for us to be alone with our thoughts. Mm. And it's a practice, I would imagine. Like if we were to practice being alone with our thoughts more often, and that's really what he's doing is he's forcing himself into uh, experiences where he doesn't have any other choice. So in the book, he is up in the Arctic chasing caribou for 30 days and rocking, you know, heavy backpack, living, it's freezing cold, la la la. And he's like painfully bored. And what he's discovering about himself in that boredom is like he's he's really being forced into facing his demons. I mean, there's a reason I believe there's a reason that we when we put somebody in rehab, for example, we pull them out of society. Like they don't just go to like a rehab place and then go home at night. Like we put the, and most rehabs are like in beautiful locations with a lot of nature, there's trees and rivers and ponds and whatever because mm. like I think we if left to our own devices we will not we don't want to be alone with our thoughts 
And yet when I go to Nepal, they don't have that angst. They don't seem to fear the being with their thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're making that judgment, obviously from yes. the outside. I don't know. hundred percent. Did you I've have, no yeah. I made did it up. you have deep conversations with people or that's what you were, what the story you've attached to what you observed? Absolutely. Yeah. That they no see data. Yeah. yeah. Total peace, interpretation. Sitting. Um, yeah. It's definitely something I find challenging. Yeah, the more too. I find myself alone, you know, I have noticed filling the time with watching Netflix J just I mean literally scrolling around oh yeah something that's the least rubbish thing to watch and observing myself doing it and going this is, you're looking for something that's the least crap that you could yes. watch yes. um and then being that's ridiculous possibly but but being brave and turning it off. Yeah. And just it, sitting there. I do think it's an act of courage to sit with ourselves. Well, I mean, it's hilarious because, you know, people are, you know, facing more obviously um, challenging situations. But it has definitely felt difficult for me to be with the silence and be with the non back to the, the, the kind of like the non busyness, like having something to do, giving myself tasks and jobs to do, having a, a list of things to achieve, even if I don't get them done. If that then gives me another distraction, kind of like, Oh, I didn't do the things. Yeah. Um, it's all a distraction from being with myself. Yeah. This is my experience being alone with my thoughts, as you mentioned, and facing my fears about what it is I really want to create. Yes. The fears that are getting in the way of me creating the things I really want to create. You bet. Mm. I mean, I think that's a beautiful place to land. I'm happy to land. I don't have anything to add to that. I think that was very eloquent mm. and articulate as usual. Mm. What's your takeaway? I think that there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> that this is a common, a common experience. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and that it's possibly, probably something I've been trained to experience mm -hmm. and it's a habit and therefore it's as, as open to change and transformation as any other habit. What's your takeaway? Um... that the overwhelm and the busyness is a coping mechanism that helps me avoid being with my own thoughts. And that to be with my own thoughts in order to be able to do that, I actually have to practice. And like, I have to do it every single day. So my practice is I run, I jog, I waddle. Did you hear how I just did that? Run, jog, waddle. Run, it's a very, jog, very uh, liberal use of the word jog with my dogs every morning. And right now, the time of day, the sun is just coming up. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really beautiful time for me to go outside and get mm -hmm. the first light of the day, circadian rhythms, right? All of that to ground myself. Um, to connect with my dogs mm. and to see, to hear, to smell, and just to be in the world with my own thoughts. Um, it takes, like I, 
I, it's, it's so automatic that I wouldn't do that, that I would fill my time with TikTok and Netflix and being busy and putting shit in my calendar. That if I don't interrupt the pattern somehow, like consciously, where it's like, it's 630, mm. I got to take the dogs. If I don't mm. do that every day and build up that muscle, mm. I will slip back into doing, getting busy and overwhelm is a familiar choice of mine. Mm. And so yeah. I'm really like trying to, every time I, I start to fall into like, ah, I feel overwhelmed. People are asking so much of me, like really checking in with myself and saying, okay, that's a choice. Mm. And then I go back out. Yes. Yeah. A choice that um, contributes to our sense of well-being. For Weirdly, sure. our sense of value of ourselves, not well-being. But when oh, we choose both. It, yeah. yeah I think they're all related. Okay, well, thanks for listening, Tracy. Please yes. let us know what you found out about Labor Day. And um, yeah, put it in the comments. Put it in the oh. comments below. Okay, sayonara, everybody. Ciao.